So, Dre, I had to realize a couple of years ago that I put this unmerited pressure on me to be the greatest father that I could ever be because I did not want to be anything like my father. I didn't want to abandon my kids. I didn't want to leave them. But, but the pressure got to me because I was trying so hard to be something. I was trying so hard to prove something to a man I had never even met before. Trying to prove to him that I was a better man than him. Never had a conversation with him. I only seen him twice before he died. And so it went from confusion to these different emotions flooding through you. What's in the heart of a father? So it goes from confusion to wondering, have you did enough? Have you put enough in them to know that they will be able to take care of themselves? Have you given them every skill possible? Have you given them every tool, tip to be able to survive? Will they be able to take care of their family? Will they be able to provide for their family? Because my oldest son only knows one thing. That's dad is going to get it done. So, so you put this pressure on you because he begins to look at you like you Superman. And you realize that you're only a prototype of Clark Kent. That you got flaws. You got kryptonite. You got issues, but they never see that. Because you got the heart of a father. And so... And seeing that kryptonite sometimes, and, and at nighttime you cry in the corner by yourself, not when your kids can see it, All right. because you're a father, you're Superman. You're still, in their eyes, the strongest man in the world. You're in their eyes, you can accomplish anything. And whatever they need, they know daddy's going to try to get it. Because I might have to go in that booth and rip off that shirt, and there might not be an S on my chest, but under my chest there is a heart of a father. Father that's willing to do anything for his children. What's in the heart of a father? Fear. Fear sets in my heart sometimes because you wonder about your children. You wonder about this world that they're in. You wonder about women. You wonder about dating. You wonder about will they marry the right woman? Will they get the best jobs? Will they have the same opportunities? Will they have better opportunities than you? But my fear sometimes is not even about women. My fear is not even about my son's contracting HIV or having a child out of wedlock. Sometimes my fear is just my, sick, my son is about to be 16. He's about to get his license. Will he one day like I was be pulled over by the police? And him reaching for his registration be shot and killed just because he was speeding. That's the heart of a father. I remember my youngest son walked in the bathroom with me one day. I was shaving. And he wanted to, just like my twin, he wanted to put on shaving cream just like me. So I let him and I lathered him up really, really good. And we stood there, both of us, looking in the mirror. And I remember looking at him and seeing what I used to be. Him looking at me seeing what he wanted to be. Wow. Wow. Me looking at him saying what I wish I could go back to. Him looking at me seeing what he wants to leap forward to. And I remember staring at him. Saying, this is my child. This is who I protect. He wants to be just like me. I see a man flawed, but he sees a man perfected. All right. And I remember just standing there and coming to terms in my mind saying, have I done everything possible? Have I did everything in my power to prepare him for manhood? If something were to happen to, thee, to me today, would he survive? And I was listening to everybody talk tonight and the Lord just spoke into my ear that being a father Right here tonight, I just heard, being a father is the only time you get to display every characteristic of God in the earth. Wow. Wow. Patience. Good, peace of God. Good. The long suffering. The forgiveness. And so, I have a hard time dealing because I'm a father on purpose. I'm a good father, Dre. I, I realized that there was nothing wrong with me. It was everything wrong with my father. I mean, why wouldn't you want to be in my life? Have you been around me? I'm a blessing. I am. If you've ever had a conversation with me, you will walk away blessed. It was hit. Something was wrong with him, Dre. Nothing was wrong with you. But in saying that, 
it sounds arrogant, it sounds confident, but you weren't there the night I had to fight through depression of wondering why this man would not come pick me up when he promised that he was coming. Wow. So I had to fight through that. Become something I've never seen before. While everybody's telling me while I'm 15, be a man. 17, be a man. Nobody showed me what a man was. So what's in the heart of a father? It's confusion. It's joy. It's fear. But ultimately, you just want your kids to be better than you. That's it. That's it. You try to beat out those imperfections <laughs> that are in them. Because you know the world will eat them up, spit them back out, and won't even care. Especially for our young black men. We got to fight for them. So I got a problem with guys I run across that talk about how they can't see their kids. And how the mama won't let them do this. But I see you walking around with $1,500 rims on, but your child don't have pampers. And daycare is halfway paid, and their sister is struggling. I see why she don't let you see them. I got a lot of forgiveness for a lot of folks, for a lot of crimes, for a lot of things. It's hard for me to forgive a guy that won't be a father. I live by one motto. If I got to take care of mine, you should take care of yours. So I'm a pastor. I'm an entrepreneur. I'm a counselor. I'm a teacher. I'm a coach. I'm a lot of things. But outside of my relationship with God, and this even goes beyond a relationship with me and my wife, I take the greatest joy in being a father. Yep. Because every day that I see them, I do not see how they could survive without me. Right. Right. But there's too many of our kids, Mike, that are trying to survive without somebody showing them the way.